Mike, Mike Samp, one of the most incredible performers in the Chicago, coming out of the Chicago area. I'm not going to try to talk like you local. I just seen you travel a little bit. You know what I mean? I, I love what you're doing, brother. Welcome mm -hmm. to this uh, C Stand Up uh, podcast that I've been doing um, for a little while. It's more of a documentation of great comics that either are mildly known, unknown, or you know, relatively good, man. So, okay. so uh, I appreciate you taking the time out your day to do this. You know what I mean? As, it's all good, Foster Child. That's what's <laughs> up, man. So, check it out, man. This, this is gonna go a little bit more in depth with you, cause you know we we doing some other stuff with this. So, let's start off like this, man. What? When did you actually? Where was your first time stepping on the stage, and how did you come to that? My first time was uh, the Cotton Club. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Baptism by fire. Uh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I okay. can't remember the host name, but uh, it was an open mic on like a Thursday or something like that, man. And um, a lot of people was telling me I need to be on the stage. So that's where everybody was telling me to go before Joe Snow started coming around or whatever like that. So I went up to the Cotton Club and did like, 10 minutes of open mic comedy. You know, when, you, when, you, when you're doing open mic, it ain't, you don't even got no jokes. You're new to the game, so you're talking about whatever comes to your head. Right. So I didn't have any jokes. I was just talking, just, just doing life, just life stuff. And my man was like, you should go to Jokes Notes, man. And uh, try out they stage. So I'm like, okay, where is that at? <laughs> you was that green, huh? Hey, man. <laughs> I was ready and false because everybody, everybody that I came across used to tell me I was funny as hell. Yeah. And I don't need working places. I don't need to be doing this. You need to be on somebody's TV show. That's that's everything I got in life, man. I'm telling you, came to somebody telling me something like that. Okay. So I just myself, man. I remember I used to work at the airport, and I had people telling me that I was funny. I had a funny look about myself, and I just I just let myself go. Like you know, I just just started being funny with the Jews and not the Jews, but the Polish people, and they just used to record me every time I come in coming to work. Yeah. On, yeah. Just record me, like man. What are you, what are you finna do today? You know? <laughs> okay. So, um, man, I just, I just, I just, I just always had a passion for making people laugh. Um, I found out where to go, and I just, I just never stopped. I heard that. So, what? Uh, you said you worked at the airport. Where else did you work? Let's like uh, three or four of them. Man, I used to work at Midway Airport. I worked at uh, the co-op. I was a passenger service assistant at at Midway. I was uh so 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 like um you anybody put them in the wheelchair yeah yeah put them in wheelchairs you know what I'm saying uh but like I did like like when I first got there they had me doing that but like the next day they had me a supervisor so I'm like okay <laughs> my aura must show these people I got leadership skills you know right 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 I heard that so, what other job what other job you do just give me two more for the uh for the bio I worked at Hat Park Co-op for a minute. And I worked at the Museum of Science and Industry. Is that I was, right? I was a janitor at the Museum of Science and Industry for like two years. Okay. Damn. So you got to see all the insides of, uh, you know, what shit that we generally don't get to see in them. Man, I set up some of that stuff, man. I cleaned that, man. Look, I used to be goofy in the museum. Like, you know, <laughs> kids used to be having their lunch at Aaron? Yeah. Man, listen, I had a dance called Black Coffee, and I had the kids. It was about 100. O over 100 kids in there. So I don't know, I just got all their attention all of a sudden, man. You know, and I had to, I had to beat on the table like a little, a little beat motion, like black coffee, black coffee. And yeah. I danced down the aisle, man. It was so funny, man. It was hilarious. Serious, man, it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> That's good shit, man. I love it, man. And uh, and I see some of that in your, uh, your stage presence, man. You got a super high energy level. You carry it Are throughout you? the whole show. Super yeah. hilarious cats of all colors and all ages love what you're doing on stage. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, I try to keep it what people would understand. Yeah, okay. Relatable. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand. So I, so I can grasp all ages, not just one age. I want I want the younger the younger generation, the mid generation. Like I'm I want the old school generation. I'm with the mid school generation. I ain't old school or new school. I'm mid school. Okay. You know, I, I, I can I can I can listen to the old school and the young school and get away with it. I even look young to mid school. I don't look 
I don't look young. I don't look old. I look, I look like me. You know, <laughs> is that right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, you, that's you in the background right there. Yeah, that's me right there. I hear me. <laughs> that's cool. So, man, um, I want to get into some of your uh, some of your life uh, situations, right? Because I know you got an incredible background, man. You've been through a lot. And you rarely ever, you know, really in, uh, indulge the crowd with any of that. And I understand, you know, you get to a point, like, once you get to maybe a Kevin I'm, Hart level, you can start I'm talking ready. about your background and shit. I'm ready to start doing that, actually, right now. I just don't know how to bring it out. Transition into that. Because, you know, yeah. That's a, uh, who talked to you about that? Because I remember George Wilborn said that to me, man. He said... The people that actually go up the ladder the best and the biggest are the ones who actually start to show their vulnerabilities and talk about shit that happened in their life and still be funny about it. So mm -hmm. it is a tough transition. It's not many people that can actually do that uh, well. Now, I will say, like, somebody like Ballhead surfacely touches it. Ballhead is mm -hmm. another actor, I mean, a comedian that comes out of mm -hmm. Chicago. He has a good solid following, a good name, and his stage show is really solid about it who is. he is. Mm -hmm. It's about it's really about the way he thinks and the way he is. And I see you do that a lot, but yours right. is not yours is very not is not talking about who about you. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't it doesn't come it, you don't come out talking about yourself so much. You might talk about what you like, what you think about. And how, uh -huh. how crazy and funny your shit is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you don't talk mm -hmm. about the fact that I know, man, not, uh, you know, and, and if I cross the line, you let me know. But I know you were in, like, a group home for a little while. I was yeah. I was awarded the state from, from three years old to, like, eight. Exactly, I got, man. I got adopted when I was eight years old by by um the lady that that uh, was my foster mother got adopted. She took me and my brothers in. Okay. Now, how many brothers you got? Talk to me about that. Do you, if it's you, if you okay with it, you know what I'm saying? Make sure man, you're cool with it. It's, it's, it was four of us, man. It was, it's not three of us. My, my, one of my little brothers, get, well, my little brother got killed. You, you know what? I saw that. I remember seeing that on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So when you were three, do you know much about your parents? Do you remember them? Man, you know, my parents from Belize, man. Okay. And so um, how'd you end up in America? I'm finna, I don't know. <laughs> my, my mother and father, you know, they they got them fake visas or whatever like that. Yeah, and they they snuck over here, and uh, they had us over here. Yeah, we was we was citizens when we was born. You know, we had birth certificates and things like that. Okay, uh, so there's a concept called anchor babies, right? Have, are uh -huh. you familiar with that? No, not at all. I'm sure you okay. Tell me. That that's what it sounds like. You guys could have been, but because there's some racial issues going on in America, especially when we were younger and you were younger, because you're younger than me, they may not have been able to take advantage of that, but then they had to let y'all stay here. So do you think, are they still alive? They still alive doing well. They, they got deported back to Belize though. Right, that's what, it, that's what it sound like. And then right. because y'all was born in America, y'all got to stay. We got to stay. Yeah, and they felt that was best for y'all. <clears throat> they felt it was best for us, probably. And I figured, like, right now, I figured, like, it was best for us because my mother <laughs> went off and had four, four more kids yeah. in L.A. Yeah. And, have you, you know have you, now with comedy, man, um, I've had the chance to travel around the world. I've had, I've been to 43 states, four countries doing comedy just because some of the agencies picked me up, put me around. Mm -hmm. You have had the opportunity to do some traveling, too. You know that there's shows in, uh, you know, other countries that could get you close to Belize, or at least, you know, you could make the money to travel to Belize. Have you, you know done what? that? I'm, I'm going and thank uh, Thanksgiving, man. I I really am. I got a plane ticket. I'm just working on my passport right now. <laughs> okay. That's, That's it. Cool. That's, That's awesome, it. man. See, this yeah. is the, this is the type of shit. Like when you do your when you start building your 45 minute. Uh -huh. show for for like netflix or somebody like that mm -hmm. man you need to add that into it because that's a big political um you know 
dog whistle that there are people that you know that um you know kids like yourself that your mom and dad made that sacrifice and you you know for for the most part i don't know how she's living in belize because i don't know much about your mom but i'm saying mm -hmm. if she felt like you were living now better than what she, she would have lived uh back then then that's mm -hmm. something that you know you might want to deal with uh, on a personal level, on stage, I know it ain't gonna start off hilarious, man. But yeah, man, that's on some Richard Pryor level shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I I want to do it. And I want to do it so bad, but like I say, I just don't know where to start from. You know what I'm saying? It's always been an idea, man. Take them to where you really come from, so they can understand who Mike Sampson really is, right? And why I act out certain ways, or why I do the things I do, why I say, why I sometimes don't care. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, I want people to understand where I'm coming from, not just look and be judging the book by its cover. Well, you know, you're doing great, man. So I wouldn't even I wouldn't even put it in that frame of mind. When when cats are you one of the names that's bubbling in Chicago. You mm -hmm. absolutely are, especially on the uh, on this side of town. And the blur the racial line is starting to be blurred a lot more in Chicago, flat out, right? So you you getting you're doing what you're supposed to do, bro. You hilarious. Mm -hmm. You got, you know, I, I see you growing. You've been on the television shows, you know what I mean? Some, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, the who's got, who's got jokes. That one. I just, uh, I just did Damon's show too in February. Right, Damon, Damon's television show, and and it's growing. You know, your name is coming across the country as mm -hmm. a cat who is Chicago doing it the right way. You know what I'm saying? So I would, I, I, I want to see you grow. I want to see the positivity. Uh, and I want to see your bank account, bro. You know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying? that's 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 what I'd like to see. How do you figure you're gonna get there? So what do you what have you put together to get yourself moving forward uh, in this business? Because you don't want to end up stumbled. There's a lot of cats that's been in this shit for yeah. a long time, and they've been in the same place forever. Ain't never been no, you know, barely been anywhere. You don't need to be that. You are in a position where you could grow. How are you going to do it? Well, uh, uh, just keep uh, keep my face out here, one. Um, stay on the stage. Okay. You know? uh, let different let people see you. But my thing is, Aaron Foster, I'm one of them dudes, man, like, like I got to have something new when I go on stage, and it's got to be right. I don't want to keep saying the same thing, but I'm knowing, I'm knowing that it's, the right thing to do, but to me, I just want to keep saying something new. But um, you know, just everything ain't funny all the time. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So you got, like, you know, you got. I just, I don't know. I'm just different with this shit. I want to be funny every time I hit that stage. Yeah. Okay. Seriously. We're comedians, you know, I, that's that's some cat's angle. That's cool. I want people hop every time I step on that motherfucker, man. Right. I feel you. I feel you on that, man. So. so. We went over your family, your background a little bit, man. And uh, so right now, presently in the Chicago area, man, there's some really cool places to perform. Mm -hmm. What are your, what's your, which one is you, which one do you feel like is your top favorite place to perform in your career ever? What was your favorite moment? And then we'll go from there. The Hera Washington Culture Center. Okay. The I, hell was, I would have never thought that one. Go ahead, tell us the story. When I did the show, we had three shows. Me, Damn Fool, B. Cole, and Joe Torrey. Okay. Man, I got two standing ovations in that place, and they both, all the shows were sold out except the last show. <laughs> okay. I got two standing ovations. Yeah. And who was that, the, Joe Torrey was the headline or the host? Joe Torrey was the host. Okay, so who was the headline? B. Cole was the headline. Okay, awesome. That sounds like a really good show. Yeah, so okay. we, man, like, I didn't even see the standing on to damn fools. Like, turn around, turn around. I look, I seen all the people standing up. I'm like, man. Yeah. I want to keep getting those right. That's what made me just, like, every day. Just try you know? to get funnier and funnier, hotter and hotter uh, as a I, time. I, I want, I be want to be unique. You know, I want to be like, man, you thought of that one. That was funny. I wish I want people to be like, I wish I could have thought of that joke. How I'm to some other comedians is how I want me to be to some comedians. I wish I'd have thought of that. Yeah, okay. So that's cool. So you kind of like, um, 
you're already kind of like a comics comic if the the scene in Chicago was you know rich like it was maybe um eighties or or early two thousands you know yeah. but, um you would be considered a comics comic so what that what that has been is like Casa B in the comics. We don't give a fuck about another comedian on stage primarily, right? You doing your own thing, you kicking with everybody. But when a cat who's like a comics comic come on stage, everybody like, hey man, let's go check out Mike Sam. And they yeah. come in because they know they're gonna enjoy it and they might learn something, right? Yeah. So we see that. And that's cool. Yeah. Um so from there, man, after that, which one, which one would you say is uh, another uh another spot in in Chicago, you love jokes and notes. Forming that jokes and notes with Mary. Mary was a, was a sweetheart, man. And sometimes, you know, if you get up on the skin, and she, she, she hit. But other than that, the stage was, it was immaculate to me. It was nice. It was great. It, it was a different feel. Because you had people, I like I like performing in front of people that's up close and personal to me. I don't yeah. like people all way back and spreading all, I don't like that. I like when they up close, it's a full crowd, it's quiet. The, the attention is all on you, yeah. and that's those wood. So did you have a full week there? I had a Headliner. week there. I had a weekend there, co-headlining co me and some 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 famous names. I, I featured for Corey Hoping there, me and a lot of people co-headlining. I, I, I think I featured like two times before I got a co-headlining spot. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. you know, Mary, Mary, Mary recognized talent. She, she knew who, you know, she was like, okay, I got you. Yeah. I, now she's uh she's a brilliant woman, man. She she absolutely knows the comedy game. Yeah. Um I'm I was I understood why she got out of it, but um I was saddened by it, man, because yeah. we look we lose a professional black environment. Now we're struggling to find professional yeah. black and, environments for brothers. And they all gotta be outside. Well, for a little while, yeah. For a mm. little while now. But um It'll it'll change. I mean, you know, we don't want to get into the to that part of it because you know right. we don't want to have that conversation because that's yeah, not right. what this is about. This is about you, bro. Not about the uh, the pandemic and shit like that. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned some of the people that you've opened up for. Mm -hmm. Corey Holcomb is a is a very selective dude. So that's kind of a a thing that that um, absolutely you can hang your hat on as uh you know i was chosen by this dude which is which is a this dude is funny stamp yeah like your, yeah your, your your uh your moniker is get stamped you know what i'm saying get uh what is it that's, that's why i come up with the sam stamp, stamp stamp right that's your, that's gonna be man that's hot you selling anything with that you you selling anything with that on it get some shirts with that i had some shirts before but they was kind of cheesy. I want my shirts for. I want my shirts to look like quality, and I want somebody to say, "Yo, how much is that shirt?" I'm gonna buy one of them. You okay. see what I'm saying? Well, and you I know, want nowadays, man. Not to interrupt you too much, but just so you can keep this in mind, you don't have to actually purchase the shirts anymore. You can just uh, put the put the image online and then sell car uh, giveaway. You know, like cards that tell people to go get the shirts at these okay. on these websites. Well, that's why you talking to me because you Ann Foster. You know a lot of this stuff. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm put you up on that, man. I'll help you set it up and uh, and everything uh, once we get this what this going. But man, everybody in our scene should be doing that. You know, yeah. what I mean? you just look up and now you got an extra. And you ain't gonna get the whole twenty or twenty five like if you went out and bought the shirt fit right. Because like Damon. He carries shirts with him, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That and that helps with the bottom line. But you also remember you got inventory in that, so you didn't pay twenty dollars for these fifty dollars shirts. Mm -hmm. With this new system, all you paying is is uh maybe a, a dime for the for the card itself. If not even a right. dime, a penny for the card itself, and you making the, a good portion of the profit, maybe ten dollars or something. And all you're doing is handing them a card that say, "Hey, they go here go where my shirts at." Go to your right. phone, look on the phone and do that. So that's another set of business. But that's what we want to do, man. We're trying to make – my goal is to try to, you know, cats that I fuck with, try to help them out business-wise. Because this thing is 20% show, 
80 percent business i know it i know it all right and a lot of us in chicago get stuck in chicago because we think it's all about stepping on stage and making motherfuckers laugh my favorite example of that is marcus combs now he's starting to get his business in together but marcus combs one of the funniest motherfuckers on this planet <laughs> for a minute you know what I'm mm. saying? But his, but he had, I believe, I can't speak for him because I love the shit out the brother, but I think he believed that you only have to step on stage. And mm -hmm. that's only 20% of it. Now, if you get the full, you get an A in 20, but then you get a a, a zero in 80, your whole, your whole thing is only 20%. But if you get a, a 50 and a 20, you in the C area, right? You right. C D, you be in the C. So we wanna, I wanna see, especially you, Roy. Uh, I mean, Ballhead is is already already on it, you know what I mean? Other cats like that. Some of these young cats coming up, I don't really know them because I'll be on my own business, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? My shit. But I'm starting to meet them. I'm starting to know them. You bringing one cat with you, this Darren Brown yeah. dude. What, Darren what Brown. can you tell me about him, man? You, you know? Brown. I like D Brown's style because it's, it ain't, it ain't, it's hood as hell, right? And he just different as shit to me. You know what I'm saying? He got, he got, he got that, he got that, he just got that funny to him. Like, I just like, I like, I like his style. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He cool brother. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when I first seen him, I was like, man, you remind me of Buck Wild a little bit. Me and Buck Wild, you know, we cool, and, you know, we cool. We got, you know, same people. So, you know, when I seen the style, I'm like, man, dude, funny, man. And, and all he need to do is get better. If he stay on the stage, he going to be a monster. Okay. That's like just like what Will Byrne told me, if, if you stay on the stage, man, nobody ain't going to be able to message you. Who who told you that? George Wilborn. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? He <laughs> said, man, but a lot of people, a lot of people that come across, like, man, dude, you you somebody, you somebody. Uh, uh, Bob, Bob something told me I'm like a diamond in the roof, like waiting to be found. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. All that, and I, I listen, and, and you know what I'm saying. But, but I, I take everything that I that somebody told me, and I tell it to other people that I that I see that's trying to do comedy, like D Brown. You know what I'm saying? Or like some other new cats. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I too much don't mess with a lot of people because I ain't like that. I ain't I ain't all that friendly. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm really not. I'm cool, but but some people just like if I wouldn't mess with you on the street, then I wouldn't mess with you in comedy. Okay, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, because I'm I'm just like that, man. Some people ain't like me, man. You know what I'm saying? Some people right. different. Some people right. different. And yeah, I mean, I accept them. They cool, but like hanging with them and just like, I just won't do that because it just I, I just couldn't. It ain't me. I understand. I totally get it. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm the same way. I I I don't. You know, I didn't embrace the streets, man, because I you know I I thought I was going to play basketball for a living. Uh -huh. Uh, but uh, it didn't work out. <laughs> I wasn't tall enough, fast enough, all of that. But my brain wasn't, you know, my my buddies. I got a lot of buddies, man. I got a lot of dudes in jail for selling dope and all that that I grew up with, friends. But I stay away from the bullshit, and that's how you do it. So I, I understand I, what you're saying. I used to try to stay away from the bullshit, man. But I was I was the bullshit. <laughs> you had now we talking. <laughs> well, now what, what what makes you say that? What what did you get uh, into? I was the, <laughs> the bullshit. Like I started a lot of shit. Did you? <laughs> I, and I started shit just because I was in a gang type shit. Right, right, okay. I I, I seriously, man, like I man, cause I knew I had backup, but I'd be by myself a lot of time. Yeah. Then I I just go, you know, do a little noise and, and it's going down. Right. But like young young Mike Sam, boy, I, you couldn't get past me, man. You it, it wasn't even like I was even I was all I always had a sense of humor, but I never played around with people. I always I was always into some shit. Well, I didn't see you have a trigger. You know what I mean? I didn't yeah. see you flip. But but, but real quick. I, I I can't fly out the deep end right now because I'm 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 a father first. You know oh yeah, I, I know, man. You got yeah. some beautiful daughters, right? I got I got to set an example for them. Some people can't get into your man when you want to knock him out sometimes or do stuff, but you got to man, I'm I'm learning you got to really walk away. Yeah. Like see, you want to stay had, free? <laughs> I was I was dressed down the other day. Had on my golden black, you know what I'm saying? I was chilling. So this grown er man older than me 
I don't, I don't even know this dude from the can of paint decides to come to me and play with me. You know what I'm saying? I want to start swinging on me. So I was like, hey, man. Don't Were y'all friends me. like that? or I, I don't even know. I'm friends with his friend. I don't know this dude. Okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's playing. He, he want to roast me. So, I, man, like, my mind be so quick, Aaron Foster, you can't really get me like that. Yeah. If I, I'm sitting chilling and I'm thinking already, like, dude, you so he eating this this man about forty something years old, late forties, eating on a uh, ice a uh, freeze. <laughs> yeah. He talking about me. I'm like, man, you show sure talking a lot of stuff from a grown man sitting sitting there sucking on the freeze pop juice. You got mad. <laughs> right. Go and that's a good night. Start on the place. So he had two freeze pops. So he offered me one. I'm like, nah, I'm straight. I don't want one, dog. He said, man, take the freeze pop. One swinging around. I said, come on, man. So I backed his hand off. When I backed his hand off, the freeze pop busted. And it busted <laughs> my clothes. Oh. My first instinct, man, I'm finna slap the dog shit out of you, man. But then I'm saying, no, because he might be police type. I ain't got time for no assault charges. It ain't really worth it. Just really show him who the bigger man is. Dog, it's all good. Don't worry about it. You ain't really get on my clothes like that guy on my shoes, but it ain't shit. Give me some water. Wiped it off. He said he wanted to play, man. I'm like, man, get your man. I had to leave, man. I had to leave. Is this a comedian? This is a comedian? That's a regular dude. One of the Roy homies, man. It's one of the Roy homies. So, you know, all all this thing, it's one of the Roy homies play too much because Roy play a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I had to, I had to, I had, I had to, I had to leave, man, before I had to do something to do. It ain't, and it wasn't because like I was scared, or it wasn't because I was afraid, or it was one guy. I wasn't none of that. It's just because I was being smart. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I ain't got time to be sitting in nobody jail, man, for nothing. Uh, uh-uh, uh, no, now, absolutely, I that, man. I made that mistake before. I ain't never did no time. You know what I'm saying? No time, time. I ain't never <laughs> did that before. No time. But I ain't, I ain't got time to be sitting for the time that I got. To, to be out here entertaining people. Yeah. And so I really don't want to be. You got a future, man. So you don't want to fuck it up. I don't know. Yeah. And there's a lot of people like that, man. It's cats that out here that might see you doing something highly positive and know you got a, a big potential bag mm-hmm. coming and they'll fuck it up because they, I mean, maybe he wanted to, he wanted to be a comedian. You know what I mean? And you run into that a lot where dudes will try to fuck with you. Thinking mm-hmm. they learning how to be a comedian man, I in run the midst of shit. All the time. Hey man, I just me tell you, I'm gonna tell you this joke. You can use you. I really don't want to use your joke, man, because like I that's your joke. It ain't mine. I don't know how to put your joke in my set because it ain't happened to me. It happened to you. Right. Only thing I put funny is what happened to me. Right. And right. why well, I didn't been around and been doing some shit, all that. Can you use this as a joke shit? Nah, I ain't I ain't on all that. I ain't saying I'm the coldest joke teller or maker but right. she oh I can, yeah, I can but if dude had if dude had done something wrong he could have halted your career 15 20 years you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. and that's, that's so you got to be careful man but i'm glad right. you out the element speaking of that man i you told me you have an agent uh-huh. now what what's the story with that how'd you find the agent what do you uh, what is she I, or he doing for you is it an agency what are they doing Okay, and I, I, I approve of you having a manager and an agent because you have a trigger. So if you mm-hmm. talking to one of these high up execs and he say something wrong, you might have an inkling to smack him, and that would be the dude who could get you a check with a comment. So you need a manager, a buffer. Well, no, actually, I don't. All I need to do is is just be 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 sensible and have a good conversation. A okay. conversation. And talk right. Like, a lot of people don't know, man, the way your aura is to people, man, is the way they're going to accept you. If I come to you all, you're going to accept me as an asshole. But if I come to you as a, as a, as a distinguished okay. and I'm coming to you talking with sense, then you're going to have you gonna have some decency to say, well, let me see what this young man talking about. That's how I come to people. I come to you as, like, if I don't know you, and I, I ain't never met you, I'm not going to come to you as Fuck you! Know, I'm gonna come at you like, hey man, let me see what you're about. Let me let me see what's on you. Let me talk to you for me. Let me see what you can do. For you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then he, you, know, I, you don't have no reason to be an asshole. Right. It ain't how you come. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't what you say. It's how you say it. True. True. One hundred percent. I'm not coming at you as no asshole. So don't 
be perceptive of me as being an asshole. I'm coming at you as a man and I'm talking to you as a man. So he won't have no reason to even, I won't even have no reason to be that Mike. I'll be having, I'm business Mike now. Okay. You know? All right, my man. Good, good, I, good, good I, shit. I, I, can, I can turn it on. I can turn it off. <laughs> it's all on. How you accept it? You see what I'm saying? Or how you coming at me? Yeah, 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 yeah. All, all good, man. So, but you do, but your agent is mm -hmm. uh is the end of it, business end of it. Does do they get you bookings or how does it work for you? I haven't got booked yet. I had a lot of I had a lot of auditions. Okay, that's of, good. So I'm she's like for uh for for like commercials and shit like that. Commercials. Uh, I had one that I was almost booked for, but they needed a white dude because they picked a black lady. Mm, okay. So, white lady, I'd have been the demand for it. Yeah, absolutely. But they wanted to, they wanted to be like a uh, black and white, ebony and ivory type type thing. So, but they was like, "Man, you killed that shit. You was what we were looking for, but we just needed a white dude." <laughs> it ain't that. The lady texted me and everything. Yeah, that's good, man. That's good. That's a beginning. You know what I mean? That and that type of shit always comes back because they'll remember you and you write back in something and they like, yeah, that's the I dude we was thinking I, about. I just did a commercial audition, me and Smacks the other day for uh, some sports thing. And they they was they was liking us when we was in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, Zoom meeting, in the lobby Zoom meeting room. Yeah. We had, we had uh, what's her name, Michelle Pascal laughing like crazy. <laughs> you know? She told the lady that these guys are hilarious, but I don't think we got chosen because first of all, it's two days later. The filming is on the 19th. And yeah, I don't think we got chosen. I just think we was just laughing stock for the day, but they gonna remember who we was though. Absolutely. And, and invite you back when it's time for something else to come, man. There it is, there it so is. That's it awesome, man, awesome. So we getting to the end of this, man. And I, I generally want to keep it to a certain amount of time. Uh -huh. And I appreciate you, you know, setting, the, setting your time apart and everything. So. My last question is this, man. Where do you see yourself in the five, in five to 10 years in this thing and what you're doing to prepare for that? Well, I see myself in the next five or 10 years, hopefully on bigger stages. Okay. On stages and more TV. Okay. So what you doing, to, what you doing to get there? Are you, I'm, are you, I'm, do you do office. any, do you do any, I mean, Chicago has a great, has great resources being developed right now for television vehicles. Like Calvin Evans ended up on that South Side show. Uh, Damon has his new uh, app and TV show that's just going to grow. Some of the execs of Netflix are in the Chicago area. So you don't have to necessarily leave, but I've seen dudes be successful, you know, going other places. D-Ray would, have his shows I'm, and then he would I'm, travel, co travel, I'm, travel. I'm what are you doing? To, I'm trying to leave right now as we speak. Okay, where you going? Uh, L.A. Okay, you gonna live there or you gonna commute? You know, I'm gonna live there, but I'm be I'm be back and forth. But okay. I'm, I'm gonna be in L.A. Okay, because you do have that's, daughters and stuff, right? Yeah, that's why I'm saying my residents. Because when they want to come, they can have somewhere to go. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely, man. Now, a different environment, you know. And my kids, suburban kids, they ain't they they like Hammond, Indiana type. They don't know nothing about this. The yeah. other day, I was arguing on, on they was at the parks, and the other day was they, somebody was arguing at or what they was walking home, and somebody was arguing. And I guess one of them was like some somebody some bread or something like that. My daughters don't know this lingo. They run home. I mean, somebody arguing. They was talking about bread. Like, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? They don't know that bread mean money. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I'm <laughs> right. They was even talking about bread. They was arguing about bread. Man, I was laughing like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a good thing, man. Keep them out of this bullshit. Man. I, I am. I am. Daughters, man. I that's am. Right. I am. So, okay, I am. Mike, man, it's been a, a, a an absolute pleasure, man, getting to know you a little bit better and learning more about you, man. And I, I absolutely look forward to um, seeing your success, man. I do. I do see it. I hope it. I hope it happens sooner than later. I appreciate you. You know, just remember me when you get them billion dollar checks, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I got you, Aaron, man. You always been a cool one with me, man. Seriously.
Excellent, man. So I'm signing off, man. Talk to you All later. Right. Oh, yes, yeah. sir.